Shan Kuti Bo Mata Anale Pashibo
Shil Prabhupada ki ji, Shri Shri Gornitai ki, Shri Shri Krishna Balaram ki, Shri Giri Govardhan ki, Shri Baradeva ki, Shri Shri Lakshmi Nishinga ki, Shri Shri Radha Govinda Madhava ki, Shri Lup Goswami Prabhupada Thirubhav Mahamahotsava ki, Shri Lagoridas Pandit, Tirubab Mahamahotsav ki. A Gaura Premanandi. The 45th anniversary of the installation of Shri Shri Krishna Balaram ki. All glorious to be assembled to the Lord. All glorious to Shri Guru and Garanga. All glorious to Shri Prabhupada. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale. Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani. Namaste Sarasvate Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nirvasesha Sunyavadi Pastatadesha Tarine. Not on. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> another thing called switch. And there's another thing called a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Buzz is finished? We're looking for the spiritual buzz. Hare Krishna. So if any devotees need a French translation, Sunda Gopal Prabhu is translating for the Prabhus. And for the ladies, is anyone, if necessary, needing translation? One, some are getting, you're getting, who's going to give the translation? Annapurna? Okay. I hope it's okay. We apologize for not being able to speak French language. But to, to do the transcendental subject matter. So the program, as you know, today is specifically to glorify Krishna Balaram. Unique situation here in Umayyapur where we are the only temple other than Vrindavan Krishna Balaram temple in the whole of the world where Srila Prabhupada installed Krishna Balaram. A special occasion, 45 years ago, some of the devotees were there, from, who are with us today. Very fortunate, as we look back. And as we say, today is also the day to mark the Rupa Goswami's departure from our vision and we'll be hearing a little bit about Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada we hope um, and also Gauri Das Pandit so we're going to um, start by chanting this verse here on the board if you can see it it's a very famous it is one of the verses in what we call, what we call Mangala Charna. When before we start events, we chant auspicious invocation prayers to evoke the blessings, glorify the object of our worship or our objective goal and to develop the mood of humility. So this verse is actually compiled. Here's this little book called Prem, Sri Prema Bhakti Chandrika, a famous collection of verses and songs by 
uh, Narottam Das Thakur, and you will find several of these uh, verses that we include in our Mangala Charna in this book. They're compiled by Narottam Das. And this is one of them. So please repeat. Um, we'll start with one before this, which some of you know, we can say together. Om Jnana Timrandasya Ananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha And today's verse. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sva Padantikam Line by line. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam yena bhutale, Svayam rupa kadamayam, Dadati svapadantikam, Shri Chaitanya mano bishtam, Stapitam yena bhutale, Vayam rupa kadamayam Dadati sva padantikam Shri Chaitanya mano bishtam Stapitam yena bhutale Shvayam rupa kadamayam Dadati sva padantikam. Shri Chaitanya mano bishtam. Stapitam yena bhutale. Vayam rupa kadamayam. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamayam Sadati Padantikam Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Tapitam ye na bhutale Vayam rupa kadamayam Dadati sva padantikam Shri Chaitanya mano bhishtam Tapitam ye na bhutale Vayam rupa kadamayam Dadati sva padantikam Ladies Shri Chaitanya mano bishtam Sapitam yena bhutale Vayam rupa kadamayam Dadati sva padantikam Shri Chaitanya mano bishtam Stapitam yena bhutale Shvayam rupa kadamayam Dadati sva padantikam 
Shri Chaitanya, Shri Chaitanya. of Lord Chaitanya, of Lord Chaitanya. Mano, Abhishtam. Mano Abhishtam, the desire, yes. Stapitam. Stapitam, established, yes. Yena. Yena, by whom, whom? Bhutale, in the material world, world. Shvayam, Personally, Personally. Rupaha. Rupaha, Shri Rupa Goswami, Goswami. Kada, Kada. When. when, Mayam, Mayam. to me, to me. Dadati. Dadati, will give, will give. Sva, Sva. Padantikam, shelter, shelter under his lotus feet. Lotus feet. Translation. Very nice. Sometimes we sing songs, prayers, and we do not even know what they mean, what to speak of. Take on the mood of the meaning of the song or the prayer. And this may be one of them that we say regularly, but maybe we do, maybe we don't know the meaning. And to try to, let's say, imbibe or take on board the essential mood of this prayer. This is by Narottam Das. When will Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, who has established within this material world the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya, when will he give me shelter under his lotus feet? It's a very nice prayer on this day. Because Narottam Das considers himself the eternal servant of Rupa Goswami. In a little late, little while, we'll sing another song which. Um, Describes the, you say, the form of Rupa Goswami and the spiritual realm in Golok as a Manjari. And Narutam also as a Manjari is assisting him. So we see many times Narutam Das Thakur refers to Rupa Goswami in his songs and prayers. I'll read, I think I will. Let me just see. I have a long paper. One or two more verses from this book by Narutam. The glories of Rupa Goswami. Jaya Sanatan Rupa Prema Bhakti Rasakupa Jugala Ujvala Rasatana Jahara Prasadi Loka Pasharila dunga shoka prakata kapataru jana. All glories to Sri Rupa and Sanatan Goswamis, who are the reservoirs of loving devotional service, being the personifications of the highest transcendental mellows directed towards Sri Sri Radha Krishna. By their mercy, a desire tree has been generated in this world that can relieve the distress and lamentation of all people. Prema bhakti riti jata nija gante su bhakata kari achena dui mahashai jahara shabana hai te parananda hai achite jugala madhura rasashai. The various characteristics of loving devotional service have been elaborately described 
by these two great personalities in their books. One who hears these descriptions feels transcendental happiness in his heart and takes shelter of the sweet divine couple. Yugala kishora prema lakshahana jini hema hena dana pakashila janra jayurupa sanatan deha mare sedan seratanam mora galehara the loving affairs of the young divine couple are like refined gold. O Shri Rupa and Shri Sanatan, you have unfolded this treasure to me and I will wear these jewels of love as a garland around my neck. Shri Rupa Goswami Prabhupada Noktam and a very famous verse compiled by Srila Rupa Goswami, which is the essential verse in the nectar of the devotion, the Bhakti Rasam Rita Sindhu, perhaps the most famous book compiled by Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, is the Bhakti Rasam Rita Sindhu. And in that book, which Srila Prabhupada has commented upon, it's interesting to note that when Srila Prabhupada took initiation in 1933 from his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj gave him the instruction to study carefully the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which was compiled by Rupa Goswami. And Srila Prabhupada published, trans, well, commented, made his summary study on that book, which we have, of course, as Nectar of Devotion, as one of the first publications in ISKCON. He described it as the Bible, as the Christians described the Bible like their guidebook on their path. Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, is our guidebook. If we want to progress in spiritual life, Nectar of Devotion is the guidebook. Most essential scripture, those who are practicing devotional service. And in that book, the what's called the Paribhasya Sutra, the topmost verse, or the verse which captures the essential purpose, meaning, and uh, means to enter into the text, is now quoted. The verse of Rupa Goswami. Anya bilashita shunyam Jnana kamadhyana vitam Anukulye na Krishnanu, Shilanam Bhakti Uttama. We have a restless microphone. I hope our minds are not as restless. This is uh, those who have, certainly those who have studied Bhakti Shastri or something like that will be familiar with this verse. It's a key verse, you could say, in the nectar of devotion. When you say key, we mean like a door, which is locked. We just heard Naratam saying how Rupa Goswami has opened the door to Krishna Prema, opened his heart. It's the key to open our hearts. The door may be there. We may be there. We may know on the other side there is pure devotional service. But how to get in? <laughs> you need some help. We need some help. But in this particular example is a key. We need the key. And that key is this verse. 
and slightly different translation, same meaning. Su the superior quality of devotional service to Krishna is to act favorably for the personality of Godhead. This means that the service must not be covered by the path of the monists. Monists, the impersonalists, not the people who just moan all the time. Also them, but <laughs> that's another obstacle on the path. We just grump and groan and complain. Um, but the monists are the Mayavad, impersonalists, path. Or the path of the fruitive workers. or should not be covered by any desire other than devotional service. So we can ask ourselves, is our devotional service mixed, or are we endeavoring to come to pure devotional service, unmixed, with any other desire? Anyabilash. Anyabilashita shunyam, free of any other desire. Abilash. Jnana kamajanavitamo. Not just a desire for knowledge, but the effect, the effect of impersonal philosophy, which is very strong. It's not exactly the necessary understanding we have in the material world based on physical interaction. It's a lot more deep than that. It's a material understanding of impersonalism. Actually, it means, basically speaking, to see things with me in the center. This is the impersonal mentality. I am the center. Listen to me. takes a bit to transform to from Atmendriya to Krishnendriya. Krishnendriya is to see Krishna in the center. So nectar of devotion is the science. Rupa Goswami's business is to, well, amongst other things, presenting scripture that helps us to transform our consciousness. From self-centered consciousness to Krishna consciousness. And this is just the summary verse. And the, the two aspects of this verse is the Tashta Lakshana and the Sarup Lakshana. The Sarup Lakshana is the first part in this verse, um, although in the Sanskrit it's the other way around. The translation gives the Sarup Lakshana, the primary characteristic, which is favorable, devotional service to Krishna. And extensive translation of this and commentary of this refers to following Anu. The word is there, Krishnanu, Shilinam. Shilinam is to cultivate. Anu means following in the footsteps or constant. Constant practice. Following in the footsteps, Krishna Anushilanam, service to Krishna, cultivating um, Anukulyena, favorable, service to Krishna, following in the footsteps of the pure devotees of the Lord. And this is another aspect of the thread of nectar of devotion given by Rupa Goswami. We don't have time to go into an extensive discussion of that verse. Um, that may be all I'm going to read from here. I think so. Hare Krishna. So where should we begin? <laughs> With a short time. Um, I haven't really organized things very systematically here. So bear with me. We're going to read a little bit from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And this is from the Ancha Lila. Maybe the only quote from here. Ancha Lila, chapter 4, text 223, if you want to follow. As we're talking about books, 
the, one of the primary um, contributions of the Goswamis. We can hardly imagine if they hadn't taken up Lord Chaitanya's instructions, what would have happened? Because they compiled the philosophy, the practice, the goal, the means to reach the goal of Krishna consciousness. They compiled these scriptures which we can now take advantage of. Otherwise, no one would have a clear idea of what is a kanta bhakti or pure one-pointed devotion. Some, we say mixed idea may be there, but pure devotional service as presented by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has been immortalized in a sense, in the writings of the Goswamis and their followers. So it's a very important, in, although we may not see Rupa Goswami going out on Sankirtan, as we call it, with his book bag, or distributing prasadam, to the down and outs or something, or on the computer, you know, doing some social media preaching. We don't hear about that. That was not preaching means, and this is another essential teaching of the Goswami, it means to assist one's spiritual master in their mission. It's not an activity, you can define it if you wish, by in a kind of a way verbally um, or somewhere or another spreading the message of Krishna consciousness. But in real terms, it is simply assisting the spiritual master. Prabhupada made that quite clear on many occasions. Preaching means to assist me in my mission, not to simply say, I want to go out and do this and that. What do we know? What do we know? Spiritual master is giving us that which is pleasing, anyabilasita shunyam, pleasing to Krishna. Anukulena, rather, Krishna, Anushilinam, that which is pleasing to Krishna. That's what preaching means, to please Krishna. Oh, I really like it. Okay, in the beginning, that's jolly good. And certainly, in the, in the, in the, on the long-term range, we could say, naturally become pleasing because Krishna will be pleased. The devotee's pleasure is that Krishna is pleased. <laughs> doesn't matter where we are or not. But one's naturally pleased because that's Krishna conscious, because Krishna is pleased. Rupa Goswami teaches us this. So we'll read a few verses. Yes. Sri Rupa Goswami also wrote many books, the most famous of which is Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. From that book, one can understand the essence of devotional service to Krishna and the transcendental mellow one can derive from such service. <laughs> In the beginning stages, we also get some mellow. It may be not always so transcendental, but we get some taste. Prabhupada says the first thing is the taste we get from service. Be it, what are you doing there? Beans? Preparing beans for Krishna's lunch. And what are you doing back there? Also beans? Beans, there's a lot of beans this morning. And someone else may be recording over here for Krishna. You're getting, well, don't taste it now, please. This is first to be offered to Krishna, but there's some taste from the service of preparing it from, for Krishna. Or kirtan, very easily we get a taste. But it's not exactly the, the ruchi of a, of, a, of a pure Vaishnava. It's related. We're getting a taste. But we may not get a taste if things don't go the way we like it, you know. Or it doesn't, whatever. Kirtan is not what we like. We're not on that transcendental platform beyond all material designation, beyond material attachment. 
But that's the practice of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It doesn't dive into the deep end. Some devotees like to dive into the deep end. Ujvala Ras was Madhurya Ras, some very intimate pastimes that we're not eligible. Eligibility has to be there. This English word I mentioned a few months or two ago called, uh, where we say, prematurely. Have you heard this word, prematurely? It's an interesting word, prematurely. I call it prema too early. <laughs> prematurely. And it's fact. We want the frame. We, we don't want to do the work. We want to eat the cake. We, we don't want to have to do the work. We want to take lunch, but don't ask me to help, please. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sick. No, 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 no. I'm too busy. We may get some taste, but not really, because we don't have this spirit. Krishna, what do you want? I'm your... Simply, I exist to please you and nothing else. That's the only reason we exist, to please Krishna. There's no other purpose of our existence. Through devotional service, we get a chance to develop this reality and get out of our dream of seeing ourselves in the center, thinking we're something special or whatever. A living, a real purpose of existence, Rupa Goswami emphasizes is simply anyabilasita shunam, to please Krishna's senses favorably. Sri Rupa Goswami has compiled the book named Ujvala Milamani, from which one can understand to the fullest limits the loving affairs of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. Described that Ujvala Nilamani follows on. Just like in Nectar of Instruction, another book, Rupade Shamrita by Rupa Goswami, sometimes we like to jump in the deep end there, literally. We like to jump into Radhakund. Go straight to the end. But one needs to go through the steps. Beginning. Until we cross one step, we can't get to the last one. It's a process, step by step, devotional practice, vaidhi sadhana bhakti, controlling our senses, engaging favorably, avoiding unfavorable circumstances, learning how to associate, and then on. Cultivating pure nam in the association of devotees. Just like Rupa Goswami, nectar of Instruction describes how we should practice devotional service under the direction of an eternal resident of Braj, even on the banks of Radhakund, the most holy manifestation within this universe. So, okay, let's go straight there. Well, yes, but it means following under the direction of that eternal associate. Just like Rupa Goswami, Rupa Manjari in the spiritual realm, in his sadhaka form, in this world, he appears as Rupa Goswami to show and teach us how we can become eligible to actually enter into Radhakund or the spiritual realm. Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj said that anyone who has a material desire cannot bathe in Radhakund. You may bathe, we may bathe, I may bathe. Okay, fine. It's not that that's wrong. But to really enter into radical, or really enter into the Ujjvala Nilamani, the internal pastimes of the Lord and his associates, is not a cheap thing. Not a cheap thing. Only under the, by the mercy of the pure, by the mercy of Rupa Goswami, we are known as Followers of Rupa Goswami. What is that? Rupa Anugas. Rupa Anuga. Followers of Rupa. So we should follow him by executing his, following his direction, his instruction. That way, by his mercy, that is his mercy, and also by, you could say, his mercy, 
we may progress in our spiritual lives. Prabhupada said he is our Siksha Guru. We have many Siksha Gurus. Some are physically present, some may not be. But he's our primary Siksha Guru in this sense. That's a big subject. Rupa Goswami also compiled two important dramas. Who knows what they are? Alita Madhava and Vidagda Madhava. Very important thing in, in, in the circle of Gaudiya Vaishnavas and other Vaishnavas too, is the pure presentation of Krishna's Philosophy and pastimes in drama. Rupa Goswami was really into drama. He presented a science, there's a whole science of drama containing various aspects. So in these two books, Vidagda Madhava mainly deals with Krishna's pastimes in Brajan. Alita Madhava, strange enough, is more referring to the pastimes in Dwarka. So these two very important dramas which he compiled, from which one can understand all the mellows derived from the pastimes of Lord Krishna. He presented these in Jagannath Puri to Srupa Damodar Goswami and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Rupa Goswami went to Puri, and they were brought great happiness to the Lord. Rupa Goswami compiled 100,000 verses, beginning with the book Dana Kelly Komudi. In all these scriptures, he elaborately explained the transcendental mellows of the activities of Vrindavan. He actually wrote 16 books, and this is described further in a book called Bhakti Ratnakar. Um, but you don't have that. I have it, but I don't have it here. So, uh, Yes. He actually compiled one book before he met Lord Chaitanya called Hamsa Dutta. I not I not got it. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but I think it's translated into English. I think Kushakrata probably did. Um, and this was one of his great contributions. Now, he appeared in this world. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arranged that so many of his eternal associates appear along with him. And Rupa Manjari was one of them. Um, in his pastimes, he appeared in 1489, according to the records, a few, few years after Mahaprabhu. And he remained about 75 years in this world. They said in 1564, he entered into the Nityalila pastimes of Radha Govinda, his worshipable deities. There's a story there. Gopaswami Prabhu was telling us that story the other day, right? About Indra Dunamaraj was telling the story about the uncovering of the deity of Govindaji extensively. And perhaps you can tell that maybe. When you, you give class tomorrow, maybe you, I'll leave it. Maybe you can tell a couple of stories tomorrow because today is short time and difficult. And you can tell them extensively, as you heard from Indra Dunama. Very, very amazing pastimes involving Rupa Goswami Prabhupada um, in Vrindavan. But you may know that when he appeared in this world, generally speaking, the Lord's associates, when they appear, they don't necessarily manifest their eternal nature when they first appear. They may be unknown, or even sometimes they appear to be in odd situations. Haridas Thakur was born in a Muslim family. Rupa was born in a very elevated Brahmin family together with his brother, of course, elder brother, Sanatana, and younger brother, Anupam. And uh, their parents were from a, 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 a Karnatic Brahmin family from South India. Father's name was Kurmadev. Kurmadev. 
And they moved. He moved to Bengal. And there Rupa Goswami was born and grew up. And he was a, like his brothers. They were brilliant scholars, learned scholars. Even language-wise, Arabic, Persian, this thing. So many languages they knew. So many things. And at that time, Bengal was ruled by the Muslim Nawab Hussein Shah. Nawab Hussein Shah was, he was kind of a bit unpredictable character, you could say. But he was very much uh, wanted to expand, to expand his uh, dominion. So in order to do that, he heard, he heard about Rupa and Sanatana and their erudition and how much they were influential amongst the Hindus. And of course, most people were Hindus, although ruled by Muslims. So he approached them, requesting them to become ministers in his government. Muslim. Muslims, yes, they're not, even in Indonesia. Some of you have been to, I'm sure, to Indonesia. Who's been to Indonesia? One hand, two hands, three, four hands going up. Even there, as a Muslim country, it's the, oh, I think it's the biggest populated Muslim country in the world. 250 million Muslims live there. And the Muslim government. But their ministers are mostly Hindus. When we say ministers, we don't mean the minister of health. We're talking in terms of tradition. Ministers, those who are giving advice, we could say in this case. Advisors, not so much ministers as we use the word. Advisors, mostly Hindus. In the case of Rupa and Sanatan, they were not just advisors, but because they were Hindus, the king, Hussein Shah, threatened them practically, if you don't accept what I request, I will go on a rampage against the Hindus. So they were kind of obligated. They didn't want to. But for that reason, amongst other reasons, of course, but that reason, particularly externally, they accepted the post. So secretary, finance minister, like that, they were doing important things, not just advising, but because they were so qualified materially also. They were doing these things. And they even changed their name. They were Amar and Santosh was understood to be their name before Hussein Shah enlisted them in his government. And then they became Dabir Khas and Sakir Malik. Muslim names. I don't know Islam, but basically speaking, or Arabic, but basically it just means like that, you know. Secretary and finance minister. So they were <laughs> obligated. But at the same time, they were, lo they were living in a place which is now in Bangladesh called Ramkeli. And there they created Gupta Vrindavan. They were well, financially they were well off because they were big ministers in the government. They were getting a lot of wealth <laughs> financially. But uh, they, were, they created Gupta Vrindavan in their in their home, um, which is Govardhan Hill, Radhakun, Shamakun, all the various pastime sites. They were literally created a, like a little little Vrindavan, just like Goswami Prabhu has in Little India. You can go down there and out of bounds at the moment, but you can normally take down. Indra's attacking right now, is that right? He did attack. Indra had a big attack from, from the rain. And now he's trying to throw tree, tr tree trunks down on Vrindavan, right? Branches. He's trying to throw branches down on the tree Vrindavan, but he'll, he's going to be thwarted very soon, don't worry. He won't succeed. But he threw a lot of rain down there for a while, trying to cause trouble. And now, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, they had the Vrindavan there, and they were living, hearing, chanting Bhagavatam, absorbed in Srimad Bhagavatam. And that particularly, and just on that note, I just like to mention that 
we're getting very close to a very historic event. We wish that it would be a little quicker, but nonetheless, we're getting close to the reprinting of the Srimad Bhagavatam in French. It should be this year. Please pray. Um, by the mercy of Rupa Goswami and the, the Lord <laughs> and devotees, that the Srimad Bhagavatam will be reprinted this year. It's almost finished, re almost ready to go to the printer. And, uh, well, what to say? If anybody wants to pre book, pre book means in advance, a set. It's very nice. And we've seen all the colors and everything, the paper, or whatever. Um, you can please see me. We have to pay the printer in, in advance, by the way. <laughs> That's another thing. Um, but yeah, they don't take credit anymore, <laughs> especially from us. Um, But this is very exciting. So it's a great opportunity for us to carry this message of Rupa Goswami in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the essence, the cream of the Vedic literature. Rupa Goswami is simply expanding on Srimad Bhagavatam and directing us how we can understand Srimad Bhagavatam. When uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he was going to um, Vrindavan, Lord Chaitanya had taken sannyas, and he, on the way he stopped off. He actually went through Bengal. You don't need to, but he went through Bengal in his first endeavor with the idea he's going to Vrindavan. But actually his purpose, main purpose, was to connect with Rupa and Sanatan, his eternal associates, and to then, when the time is right, the Lord reveals, you know, unveils various pastimes or various devotees <laughs> manifest themselves. Previously a little hidden. Their identity was hidden. They were basically rejected by the Hindu society as far as being Brahmins is concerned because they were working for the Muslim government, considered outcast almost. Um, but when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there to Ramkeli, on his way, didn't go to Vrindavan, he stopped. Can I not to shell, but he stopped in, Ra in Ramkeli to see Rupa and Sanatan. And they heard that Lord Chaitanya was nearby, so Rupa and Sanatan, in the middle of the night, disguised themselves and went to take the darshan of Mahaprabhu. And they fell with straw in their mouths, straws. We have plenty of straw here, if anyone needs to, any straw. Humble is a sign of humility. And they fell at Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet. People call us learned, say, learned uh, men. But actually, we are fool number one. We don't even know who we are. In their humility. Number one fools. Anyway, they got that associate. Lord Chaitanya then gave them the name Rupa and Sanatan and requested them to join him in Vrindavan. Lord Chaitanya went back to Puri and later on he went to Vrindavan again, different route. Uh, Rupa Goswami, taking up the Lord's request, he retired from his ministerial post and headed off with Anupam on his journey to Vrindavan. He was sending messages. Those days there was no text messaging. Um, things were by you know, word of mouth mostly. So he was sending messengers to Puri to find out the movements of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By the Lord's arrangement, he didn't reach Puri, uh, excuse me, didn't reach Vrindavan in time to meet the Lord there. The Lord was on his way back to Puri. And at that moment, the Lord was in Allahabad, Prayag. And Rupa Goswami, on his way to Vrindavan, reached Allahabad. And there, 
he met Lord Chaitanya. And for 10 days, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Rupa Goswami on the banks of the Dash Ashwamedha Ghat in Allahabad on the science of pure devotional service. And again, I have, I can't say for sure where we're going to pick up here, but we'll try. Where's that other book gone? Where did this? No, I think it's on my computer. Let's see. Hmm. So he instructed him on the science. You can read the instructions. It's in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Here in the Madhya Lila. And I'll read from that. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is instructing Rupa. Vindavani yong vasakeli vartang kalena luptang nija shokti mukta sancharya rupe vyatanat punaksa prabho vidho pragiva loka shishtim. Interesting. This is the first verse. It's like an invocation verse to the chapter of instructing Lord Rupa Goswami. Before the creation of this cosmic manifestation, the Lord enlightened the heart of Lord Brahma with the details of the creation and manifested the Vedic knowledge. In exactly the same way, the Lord, being anxious to revive the Vrindavan pastimes of Lord Krishna, impregnated the heart of Rupa Goswami with spiritual potency. By this potency, Srila Rupa Goswami could revive the activities of Krishna in Vrindavan, activities almost lost to memory. In this way, he spread Krishna consciousness throughout the world. Lord Chaitanya spread it through Rupa Goswami and the Goswamis and other devotees like that. He entered their hearts. All glories, all glories that we could just read that. Time is too short, as always. And a very famous verse, which Rupa Goswami then offered to, when they met in Allahabad, Rupa Goswami offered this prayer. And I think most of us know it. We can say it together. Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Nam Negora Trishe Namaha. Rupa Goswami said, O oh, most munificent incarnation, you are Krishna himself, appearing as Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You have assumed the golden color of Srimati Radharani, and you are widely distributing pure love of Krishna. We offer our respectful obeisances unto you. We offer our respectful obeisances unto that merciful, supreme personality of Godhead who has converted all three worlds which were maddened by ignorance and saved them from their distressed condition by making them mad with the nectar from the trans from the treasure house of love of God. Let us take full shelter of that personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, whose activities are wonderful. And then of course the interaction goes on when having time to read more, where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then expounds upon the science of devotional service and requested Rupa Goswami and later Sanatana Goswami also four things, four responsibilities, and they were to uncover Sri Krishna's lost pastime places. We take it for granted, we go to Vrindavan, and here is Seva Kunj, here is, you know, this one, Nindaban, here is, you know, whatever it is, Bamsi Vat. 
and here is Govardhan, and here is Govinda Kund, and Radha Kund, and Sarabhi Kund, and here is this one and that one. Many of these places were lost in the course of history. They were uncovered, revealed by the Goswamis, the Garba Goswami, and Lokanath Goswami, and the four, six Goswamis, and others, and by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. So now we can go there and absorb our hearts in those, you can say, Boma manifestations, Boma um, present, presence of those holy places and the service. So that's the Goswamis, particularly. Installing deities, we've already heard how Rupa Goswami, this we haven't heard how he did it, but we heard about it. Just uncovered Govindaji, Yoga Peak, and how the other Goswamis also installed deities and worshipped them, and showed the proper process of puja, or worship. To write Bhakti Shastras, which profoundly Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami and Jiva Goswami particularly were prolific in the writing of scriptures. And to propagate the rules of Bhakti Yoga. Oh, I don't like rules. Well, I like what I like, but I don't like rules. Uh, rules are for fools. As you say, rules are for fools. Well, that's the first step in devotional service when we realize we are fools. That's why we need rules, because we are fools. I don't need this. I'm a, I'm just chant Hare Krishna. Jamma, Kariyadi, Shravana, Kirtana, millions of lifetimes keep, oh, keep going on. No love of Godhead will not manifest. Surrender, surrender. Our time has expired. And breakfast has to be served. And we have a mm, mountain to go through, but what to do? We can start where we are. Rupa Goswami. Rupa, as you know, means form. Maybe Goswami, one whose senses are completely controlled. So Rupa. The form of Rupa Goswami. We heard earlier on, Rupa Manjari is very beautiful. You could say his form in this world is in the form of his teachings. We take shelter of Rupa Goswami's teachings, which means taking the dust of Rupa Goswami's lotus feet, smearing it over us. We will become freed of the powerful tendency to become attracted or be attracted to the forms of this world. We're all infatuated by the forms of this world. And if we take this dust of the literary form of Rupa Goswami as our life and soul. By his mercy and the mercy of the Lord, we can become freed of this inclination to be attracted to the forms of this world and become attracted to the transcendentally, unlimitedly beautiful form of Shishi, Radha Govinda Madhava. What to do? No time left. Ten o'clock is the kirtan. It, I believe it's here in the temple. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. Could you please announce? Oh, just as I, I was just about to do it anyway. So, um, ten o'clock here in the temple room. Somebody, I think. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu maybe is making or made a schedule for the kirtans, whatever. Starting at 10 o'clock here in the temple room, we're continuing up to lunchtime. It says 1300. I don't see why it doesn't have to be 1300. It could be 1330 up until lunch. And you are welcome to carry on after that, but there will be some activity in here preparing for a program at 3 o'clock. We'll be having a um, presentation here at 3 o'clock for the 45th anniversary of the installation of Krishna Balaram. In 1976, the deities were installed by Srila Prabhupada here in New Maipur. So 
So there will be a presentation that the Vishesha has put together. I don't know much about it. I think some videos from some devotees, I don't know exactly, and some slide projection or something, uh, together with Kirtan. There will be Kirtan during it also. We didn't get time to sing Sri Rupa Manjari Pada. Maybe Agni Dei Prabhu would like to sing it this morning. It's up to him. Um, a song glorifying Rupa Goswami's eternal position as a Manjari, hankering for that position of service to Rupa Manjari. So 10 o'clock here in the temple, Prasad will now be served, breakfast, lunch, normal time, and on we go. And then in the evening, as usual, RT 6.30, followed by Julanyatra, followed by Kirtan. Maybe Madhava Prabhu will be leading Kirtan tonight also, I don't know. So take advantage of this opportunity to, let's say, absorb ourselves in hearing and chanting about Krishna. Not about controversial things, not about past issues. Let's focus on not past times, but the present times. Dwell not the past that sleeps, nor ere the future dream at all, but live with times that are with thee, and progress thee shall call. This is our opportunity to change our consciousness by exposing our senses to this simple process of hearing and chanting and practical service. Please help if you can. When the temple management, who are working around the clock, literally, to try to put on this festival, please do cooperate. We're just trying to serve the Vaishnavas. There's tons of service to do. And there's tons of opportunity. The more we... Baba wanted us to cooperate reasonably, as much as we can. So please try to cooperate and bear with whatever shortcomings are there. Let's try to make this a festival of purity. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri Rupa Goswami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri Gauri Das Pandit Ki Jai. We didn't have time to talk about him. We were going to talk about him also, but no time. Hare Krishna. Go, Brahman.